welcome to my demonstration video on tarsal bones tarsal bones are seven in number they form the skeletal framework of hind foot and mid foot they are arranged in three rows proximal intermediate and distal rows proximal row bones are calcaneum and talus intermediate row is formed by medially placed navicular bone distal row is formed by laterally placed cuboid and three cuneiform bones medial intermediate lateral largest of all tarsal bones is calcaneum smallest of all tarsal bones is intermediate cuneiform bone talus lies above the calcaneum forming junction between the leg and foot bones let's see the bony features few relations and side determination of tarsal bones calcaneum it is also known as heel bone it shows six surfaces superior surface inferior surface medial surface lateral surface anterior surface and posterior surface let's see the features on each surface of the calcaneum superior surface it is divided into three parts anterior middle and posterior parts anterior part is roughened and depressed it gives attachment to stem of inferior extensor retinaculum interosseous talocalcanean ligament and it gives origin for extensor digitorum brevis muscle middle part shows oval shaped convex articular facet which articulates with the body of talus to form subtalar or talocalcanean joint posterior part is rough and flat inferior surface it is rough throughout it shows three prominent bony tubercles anterior lateral and medial tubercles medial tubercle is largest of all it gives attachment to plantar aponeurosis flexor retinaculum it gives origin to abductor hallucis muscle and flexor digitorum brevis muscle lateral tubercle gives origin for abductor digiti minimi muscle anterior tubercle gives attachment to short plantar ligament the triangular shaped area between the three tubercles give attachment to long plantar ligament coming to the medial surface it is slightly concave on its anterior superior part it shows a shelf like bony projection known as sustentaculum tali it projects medially in anatomical position it shows upper articular facet which articulates with the head of the talus and lower rough grooved surface which is occupied by the tendon of flexor hallucis longus its medial margin is related with flexor digitorum longus tendon and it gives attachment to two ligaments anteriorly spring ligament and medially deltoid ligament posterior part of the medial surface gives origin for flexor digitorum accessorius muscle lateral surface it is rough throughout it gives attachment to posteriorly superior peroneal retinaculum anteriorly inferior peroneal retinaculum where it shows a bony tubercle known as peroneal tubercle or peroneal trochlea it is related above with the tendon of peroneus brevis and below with the tendon of peroneus longus behind the trochlea there lies a bony roughened elevation which gives attachment to calcaneo fibular ligament anterior surface it is completely articular it shows a concave convex or saddle shaped articular facet which articulates with the cuboid bone to form 
calcaneo cuboid joint posterior surface it is convex its lower part is roughened receives the insertion of tendocalcaneus and plantaris upper part is smooth related with a bursa keeping these points in view let's see the side determination of calcaneum identify the oval shaped convex articular facet place it superiorly sustentaculum tali should projects medially and a saddle shaped articular facet should face anteriorly which means this is right sided calcaneum talus it lies above the calcaneum it has three parts in front is the head a constricted neck and a larger body behind head of the talus is deviated medially as the neck makes an angle with the axis of the body which is 150 degree angle open medially head of the talus shows a convex articular surface which articulates below with the upper articular surface of sustentaculum tali of calcaneum it also articulates in front with navicular bone to form talo calcaneo navicular joint or pretalar joint which is supported below by spring ligament neck has upper rough surface and a lower rough grooved surface known as sulcus talli which gives attachment to cervical ligament and interosseous talo calcanean ligament when talus articulates with the calcaneum the sulcus talli is converted into a bony tunnel known as sinus tarsi which is filled with the interosseous talo calcanean ligament coming to the body of the talus it has four surfaces and a posterior end the surfaces are upper surface lower surface lateral surface and a medial surface here is the posterior end upper surface is convex and articular known as trochlear surface which is broad anteriorly it extends medially as well as laterally to form a continuous articular surface known as trochlear talli which articulates above with the tibiofibular mortis to form ankle joint or supratalar joint the medial articular facet is comma in shape which articulates with the medial malleolus of the tibia rest of the medial surface is rough lateral articular facet is triangular in shape which articulates with the lateral malleolus of the fibula lower surface of the body is concave and smooth it articulates with the convex articular facet of the upper surface of the calcaneum to form talo calcanean joint or subtalar joint posterior end of the talus it shows two prominent tubercles posterior and medial tubercles both are separated by a bony groove which is occupied by flexor hallucis longus tendon now let's determine the side of this bone place the convex trochlear surface above comma shaped articular facet medially head should face anteriorly and deviated towards medially which means this is right sided talus navicular bone it's a boat shaped bone it has six surfaces posterior anterior dorsal plantar medial and lateral surfaces 
posterior surface shows a deep concave articular facet which articulates with anterior part of head of the talus to form talocalcaneo navicular joint anterior surface is convex shows three triangular articular facets which articulate with corresponding cuneiform bones dorsal surface it is rough and convex it is broader than the plantar surface which is rough and narrower medial surface shows a tuberosity which projects medially in anatomical position it receives the insertion of tibialis posterior lateral surface is rough and flat it articulates with cuboid bone let's determine the site place the concave articular facet posteriorly so that the three triangular articular facets face anteriorly place the tuberosity medially and the rough convex surface dorsally which means it is right sided navicular bone cuneiform bones they are three in number medial intermediate and lateral cuneiforms intermediate is smallest and medial is largest cuneiform bones they are wedge shaped bones having a sharp edge forming one of their surfaces let's see the features of individual cuneiform bones medial cuneiform its edge projects dorsally in anatomical position whereas the edges of intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones project downwards towards plantar surface so that their rough bases face dorsally and the base of medial cuneiform bone faces towards plantar surface posteriorly they show triangular articular facets which articulate with corresponding triangular facets on the navicular bone anteriorly they do not align in the same plane because of the smaller intermediate cuneiform bone the anterior surface of medial cuneiform shows kidney shaped articular facet with its concavity facing medially it articulates with first metatarsal bone intermediate cuneiform shows triangular shaped facet which articulates with second metatarsal lateral cuneiform shows triangular facet which articulates with third metatarsal as well as second medially and fourth metatarsal bone laterally the lateral surface of medial cuneiform bone shows inverted l shaped articular facet which articulates with corresponding facet on the medial surface of intermediate cuneiform the lateral surface of intermediate cuneiform shows a concave bean shaped articular facet which articulates with corresponding convex articular facet on the medial surface of lateral cuneiform bone the lateral surface of lateral cuneiform bone shows oval shaped articular facet which articulates laterally with cuboid bone Let's determine the site. 
the edge of the medial cuneiform should face dorsally inverted l shaped articular facet face laterally kidney shaped articular facet should face anteriorly which means this is right sided medial cuneiform bone intermediate cuneiform it's a smallest of all cuneiforms with edge facing downwards base dorsally inverted l shaped articular facets on its medial surface and a concave facet on the lateral surface the triangular articular facets anteriorly and posteriorly this is right sided intermediate cuneiform lateral cuneiform edge facing downwards with the base dorsally placed convex articular facet medially oval articular facet laterally with the triangular articular facet proximally this is right sided lateral cuneiform bone cuboid bone it's a quadrilateral shaped bone having six surfaces dorsal surface plantar surface medial surface lateral surface anterior and posterior surfaces dorsal surface it is rough and flat plantar surface is marked by a horizontal bony ridge which divides the plantar surface into posterior sloping surface and anterior grooved surface which is occupied by the tendon of peroneus longus medial surface it shows oval shaped articular facet which articulates with the corresponding facet on the lateral cuneiform bone lateral surface it is marked by a groove through which tendon of peroneus longus enters into plantar surface anterior surface shows two articular facets which articulate with fourth and fifth metatarsal bones posterior surface shows a saddle shaped articular facet which articulates with the corresponding facet on the anterior surface of calcaneum to form calcaneo cuboid joint at the junction of dorsal and lateral surface of the cuboid bone it shows a bony projection known as calcanean angle of the cuboid which maintains the upward tilt of anterior part of the calcaneum let's determine the side of the bone keep the saddle shaped facet posteriorly grooved surface laterally oval shaped facet medially and the horizontal bony ridge towards plantar surface which means it is right sided cuboid bone thank you for your patient listening keep learning